So good afternoon all. Uh, I am Snehalata, uh, Senior Research Scientist, uh, uh, FOSSI Project IIT Bombay. On behalf of the FOSSI team, I welcome you all to this webinar on web-based resources for teaching and learning chemistry, atomic and molecular visualization for general and inorganic chemistry by Professor Robert Hansen. So he's already here. So good afternoon, sir, Elvin, and welcome to this webinar. Thank you. Uh, so let me go through a few general instructions for you all. So kindly keep your mic on mute throughout the presentation. So if you have any query, please post it in the chat window. FOSI team members will answer them. The presentation by Professor Hansen will be for approximately 50 minutes. So at the end of the presentation, there will be a 15 minutes uh, question and answer session. So which uh, uh, Professor Hansen will uh, answer them. So kindly post your questions in the chat window. Uh, or you can also send an email uh, to eoutreach or contact hyphen soul. So all the slides uh, presented uh, during this talk will be uploaded at the NMEICT website after the webinar. And uh, we'll also give you a feedback uh, link uh, in the email. So your feedback is very important and valuable to us. So kindly fill the feedback form and submit after the seminar. Uh, so Professor Kannan, who is the uh, principal investigator of the POSI and the Spoken Tutorial Project is also here. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And, uh, yeah, so he'll be uh, formally introducing Professor uh, Hansen to you all. Um, and also he'll talk about uh, the FOSI and the Spoken Tutorial Projects briefly. So after that, uh, Professor Hansen will start his presentation. So in uh, today's presentation, uh, uh, he will talk about the general and inorganic chemistry, uh, such as uh, he'll take a few examples uh, of Lewis structures and the web-based resources. Uh, uh, for that uh, particular topic, and uh, he'll talk about atomic orbitals, molecular orbitals, molecular shapes, uh, kinetics, like uh, orders of reactions and all, and point groups, uh, and a few crystal structures. So all these actually, uh, there, there are many, uh, today's uh, webinar, there are many participants who are the higher secondary school teachers, that is PGTs. Uh, uh, so it will be very useful uh, for them. And the second webinar, which will be on uh, the next Thursday, that is 22nd, he will talk about uh, the 3D organic structures visualization and software involved and the uh, web pages he has uh, made uh, on these uh, topics. Then conformations of uh, organic compounds, you all know uh, the butane, cyclohexane, and a um, uh, lot of other examples he'll be talking about. Then stereochemistry, isomerism, uh, NMR spectroscopy in relation to the chemical structure and organic reactions and molecular orbitals. <clears throat> so all these topics, uh, they are mostly aligned to the uh, NCERT uh, class 11 and 12 uh, uh, curriculum, uh, which is mentioned uh, in their website. And all the principles that are uh, you know, that are there for the 11th and 12th standards uh, will be discussed in these uh, uh, webinar. And uh, he, he will talk a few examples of uh, for each topic, like, uh, for example, for conformational analysis, there, I'm sure there are uh, butane and uh, cyclohexane uh, examples. And uh, for serochemistry, R&S uh, uh, configurations and uh, not sure if NMR spectroscopy is there for 11th and 12th, but definitely at the undergraduate level, uh, it's definitely there. So he'll talk about that and even the point group symmetry. So you are sure you can uh, recognize all these textbooks. There are uh, 11th and 12th standard in CRT, chemistry, part one, part two. So, yeah. So most of the examples he'll talk uh, are from this. And if you want to get involved, uh, like if you want to contribute uh, 
for the web pages or you want to create your own web page and uh, uh learn how to do it you can send an email to us contact hyphen soul at fossi dot in so we'll get back to you so thank you i think uh, over to you professor uh, kanan actually for the introduction yeah yes. so thank you dr sneglata kaliyapun uh, for uh, a brief introduction to the seminar series uh, the background uh, how uh, we are going to go ahead and so on um there are almost uh, 200 people now so i think we should uh, it's the right time to uh, introduce uh, uh, professor robert hansen um the short form for robert is bob many people in, in india may not know so you will see on his uh, window it appears as bob hansen um uh, let me give a first uh, brief background to how we even got to know Uh, uh, professor hansen and then uh, uh, i'll introduce him we have a project called spoken tutorials uh, at iit bombay and in fact uh, snehalata um, has been a senior researcher in that she has created a lot of uh, tutorials she and her team she leads the school team or science team and uh, uh, there are lots of uh, topics i'll show you what these are and uh, the spoken tutorials are 10 minute long audio video tutorials although we call them spoken uh, they also have a video component and um, created for self learning dubbed into our languages and usable offline and we have trained a really a large number of students and teachers using these uh, videos uh, one day apparently uh, doing a random search uh, professor hansen came across Uh, our material and he wrote to us hey what's happening and then we got in touch with him and then i let um, snehalata to go after professor hansen and what followed was professor hansen visiting iit bombay he was um, uh, he came here as a visiting uh, professor and then um, um, you know it was an amazing uh, experience um, the way he handles uh molecules is almost like a mechanical engineer you know going and looking at it but except at the molecular level it's a it's a an amazing experience um i was just telling him that if only uh, we have more interactions with him the interest in science will go up in at least will go up at least 10 times amongst our students so i invite uh, i invited uh, professor uh, Hansen to continue to be in touch with us. Mm, let me give a brief background to uh, Professor Hansen. Dr. Robert Hansen has been a professor of chemistry at Saint Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota, USA, since '86. He received his bachelor's at uh, Caltech, PhD in Columbia, all in chemistry. He did a postdoc at MIT for two years. Uh, professor Hansen received several awards: Fulbright Specialist Grant from the U.S. government. NSF Presidential Young Investigator Award, NIH uh, Research Service Award, NSF Pre-Doctoral Fellowship Award, and so on. He has a patent for the Sharpless Asymmetric Epoxidation, a widely used method in organic synthesis. He has published widely in the areas of cheminformatics, bioinformatics, computational material science, and chemistry and physics education. He is the author of two books. Let me see whether I can look at this. Here is the first book. I don't know whether you can see the the book. So yes, is, sir, we can see. Yeah, yeah molecular origami, precision uh, scale models from paper, and the second one, introduction to molecular thermodynamics. Professor Hansen is the principal developer of JMOL, an open source project dedicated to interactive molecular visualization and analysis. He is the sole proprietor of Integrated Graphics. specializing in the design and implementation of interactive molecular graphics for education and research professor hansen is the chair of the iupac fair spec project currently developing a standard for the uh, fair fair findable accessible interoperable and reusable management of spectroscopic data in chemistry what i will do is i will take uh, one more minute to talk about the fossi project that has uh, that is hosting uh, professor hansen and then i will hand over the mic to professor hansen um as you all know the 
the title of the today's webinar is Molecular Visualization for General and Inorganic Chemistry. I told you about spoken tutorial project. There is another project called um, FOSI, but I don't know whether I can share my screen. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I can share my screen. So this is our uh, FOSI.in page, uh, free and open source software for education. And we have this, our beloved uh, president, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam, who makes a statement about uh, why we should use open source software. This software, this project promotes several open source uh, software systems, Scilab, Python, eSIM, OSDAG, DWSIM, OpenFOAM, OpenModelica, OpenPLC, FLOS Arduino, single board heater system, R, QGIS, Focal, and Sol. I don't have time to go through, even to say what these other software systems are because of lack of time. But this SOL stands for, let me see if I can, stands for Science Open Source Software for Teaching Learning. It's a collection of ICT software that can be used as teaching learning tools by the community of educators and the learners to teach, stroke, learn the basic as well as the advanced concepts in science topics. Okay. So it's very easy to locate this web page, um, FOSSEE.in, free and open source software for education. So once you go there, you will see lots of information. If you click this soul, then it'll take you to the page dedicated to this activity. And um, Dr. Snehalata Kaliyapan actually uh, is in charge of this. And of course, we have a web team that helps her build this page, and it is also possible for people to contribute in this. For example, here it is science and concept map projects. And um, uh, so that is one. So if you click here, it will take you what are these um, science and concept map proposal form. Here are completed projects. You can see what are the completed pro projects and who submitted. So these are all IIT Bombay people. But we welcome all of you, especially the school teachers, also to contribute. And your name will come here. And if you click here, supposing I click here, so it gives details of the person who created this. In this case, it is Dr. Rani Parvati. So if it is you, then your name will appear. Then you can give this URL to anybody. It could be useful in your uh, uh, in your assessment, and you know, or you may want to share this with your students and uh, download abstract, download science and con concept map. So these things are accessible. So this is the concept map project, but there can be other projects also. And how to participate in that is given here. The procedure is here. If you click this, the procedure comes and submission guidelines are here. Okay. So I welcome all the people. I see that the number has already gone to almost 250, which is a fantastic thing. Normally at IIT, uh, only one third of the people who register show up. Here it is more than 50%. Uh, in fact, almost 75% of the people have uh, have come here. So I believe it's a, it's an amazing uh, a turnout. And with that, I'm going to let me stop sharing the screen first. Let me see here. Okay. And uh, so as um, um, all that information is already available in FOSSEE, in. I urge all of you to keep looking at that page for announcements in case our emails don't reach you. We do send out emails. We do send out emails to all people who register in our courses, but sometimes it may go into the spam folder. You may not see them. So please monitor this page. And there we will have links to all the spoken tutorials. Remember, I told you about spoken tutorials at the beginning. We have conducted many workshops. In fact, uh, Dr. Sneglata's team has conducted many workshops in the past and um, future workshops will also be announced and uh, the tutorials, if any made, will also be available through this link, uh, fossi.in and go to SOUL, that is the software. Uh, so with that brief introduction to the background projects, namely FOSI and uh, uh, spoken tutorial that are hosting uh, Professor Robert Hansen, um, I invite uh, all of you to this uh, webinar and I invite all of you to 
um, you know, make full use of it and take interest. And um, in case you have any questions on the, in case at the end of the talk, uh, Professor Anson, I mean, there is not sufficient time. Professor Anson is not able to answer all your questions. Or if you have some other questions that you don't want to ask here, for example, you have questions on how to participate in these projects, which may not be relevant to Professor Hansen's topic per se, you can write to us and then uh, Dr. Snegalata will give the contact email address or the link to this web page so that it is easily accessible to all of you. I welcome all of you to participate, contribute. I welcome your students also to, some of you might have really bright students and uh, please uh, do ask them to join. Um, we have a limit of uh, 500 people who can join. There are only 242 people today. We could have accommodated another 258 people today. So uh, do feel free to come to the next one. It's an amazing thing. Uh, also make available this video to all your students. Who knows, as I told you earlier, 10 times the number of students may become scientists, uh, if not chemists. So with that brief introduction, um, I welcome Professor Hansen um, to deliver this amazing webinar. And we are all anxious to hear you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, welcome from Minnesota in the center of the United States. Uh, we have, it's a beautiful late summer day here, early in the morning for me, but I will do my best to, to, uh, to present this in a way that uh, is understandable and um, followable. I wanna point out that all the slides that you see today with various links will be available on the FOSSI website later. Uh, and that you don't have to write down any of these links. I'll be using my PowerPoint as a starting point and then firing off uh, to various web pages. And uh, these are all publicly available, easily accessible websites. Uh, I've picked six today that relate to the class 11 and class 12 curriculum primarily, going a little bit beyond that in some cases uh, into some more undergraduate level. I know there are many teachers here, very, very, very happy to be able to interact with the uh, high school teachers of India. This is very special for me. And also many, I think, uh, college undergraduate teachers and several students. So welcome students. Uh, it's your future here that we're talking about. So the other, the other point I wanna uh, add to what uh, Professor said was that uh, JMAL itself that I have been working with is an open source project. It's a community driven project. So when people have ideas for web pages or capabilities, that's how we grow. And there's a wonderful list of people who contribute to JMAL and discuss JMAL if you want to get involved in anything like that. Please uh, feel free to let me know and I'll get you in the right direction. Um, it really has been a wonderful project that I've worked on for about the last dozen years. And it, it's, um, I think you'll see the kind of creativity that can be generated by this tool. And we're actually gonna start with something that doesn't have to do with JMAL, but it's a favorite little web page that I, I made many years ago. And, uh, is still used quite a lot. And if you are teaching that entry level chemistry where students are just learning about Lewis dot structures and how to draw molecules and the bonding distance, I think you'll like this website. So we'll just start with a little very, very, very simple website that doesn't use any real molecular visualization at all. Okay. But today, I'm going to show you a very simple site, uh, Lewis Dot Structures that we have here. Uh, a nice site that was a collaboration that I did with a, a group uh, at another university on atomic orbitals. Uh, we'll look at a website that has uh, almost a thousand molecules, which I call cool molecules, because I just think they are so cool. And 
um, how you can use those and even uh, for some of them, fold paper models to, to uh, hold in your hand that are scale models of these actual structures. Uh, those are all experimental structures, which is a little bit unusual in our world. You know, we, we usually idealize things. What's the angle in a tetrahedron? 109.5, but really that's just for methane. Plenty of other tetrahedral molecules have shapes that are not exactly tetrahedral, ideally tetrahedral, but we still call them tetrahedrons. And so this uh, website with molecular shapes gets us a little bit more into the actual structures that are out there. I'm gonna share with you a site uh, about kinetics and I won't have time to explore it very much just to pique your interest a little bit because um, this is a site that has lots and lots of possibilities if you teach kinetics with graphs and data. Uh, it has a capability of simulating kinetics experiments and really getting students thinking about how you, how you handle this data and what it really means. We'll, we'll play with that a little bit. I hope we have time for that. Hope we don't run out and I have time. Uh, and then point group, I don't think that's something that's really discussed at the class 11 and 12 level, but I know there are people who are uh, interested in that. Uh, we sent out a survey prior to this, and a lot of people said they were interested in seeing something a little bit about point groups. So um, actually, uh, because of that, I wrote a website just a couple of weeks ago, uh, specifically for this webinar and I wanna show it to you and see what you think. I would love to have some feedback if for those who do do some teaching or learning relative to point groups, how you like it. Uh, you will be the first to have seen this website, I believe, pretty much. And I'm very interested in feedback. Uh, it's all a living process. So uh, what it is now may be different two weeks from now if people say they have great ideas uh, that would be terrific. And then uh, a website that's a little similar to it uh, for crystal structure, uh, which does uh, directly relate to the class 12 unit one curriculum <laughs> item, which is uh, solid state and how we look at crystal structures, even at a very basic level. So that's the, that's the scheme. Uh, we'll start with the Lewis dot structures. So uh, the web page is called Constructa Lewis Structure. And uh, basically this site has about 40 molecules loaded into it and a very crude sort of depiction of them that allows you to build Lewis dot structures. And uh, students who are doing that can play all they want and see how it works. It has a, a little uh, tally box at the bottom that of the that tallies up how many electrons you have and whether it's all adding up correctly. And here's a you notice here a little box that says still needed. If you haven't put in the lone pairs yet, it'll tell you you need some electrons here. And then uh, you can check it, and uh, I'll show you how you can show the resonance. So here we go. First one. Construct a Lewis structure. This is the website. We're going to pick a compound. Quite a good list here, sort of covering the basic compounds that students might learn in an introductory course in chemistry. As you can see, let's see, what should we do? How about carbonate ion? It will start with the sigma hybridization, the single bonds connected. We don't need students at this in this site to be able to try to put all the atoms together correctly. We're just gonna start with that connection. But the question is, what do you wanna do about double bonds and lone pairs? And so we might say, well, I think there should be a double bond here. But beyond that, I can't put another double bond to carbon or that would go to five. So I can't really put any more double bonds here, but I sure need a lot of lone pairs because it says down here, I need 16 electrons. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna start pointing to atoms and saying, I need some lone pairs around here. 
we just went to still needed zero and uh, everything's good. And there you have it. Uh, that's the carbonate. Now, if you're familiar with these Lewis dot structures, you know that they're not really adequate for describing the full characteristics of a structure, are they? Because all these oxygens are the same. They're not really different. And this is just one of the several representations. So one thing you can do here is have it cycle through the various resonance contributors and give a better sense of what's really going on in that molecule. Actually, they share the minus charges. No particular oxygen is more negative than the others, isn't it, in this? That's it. That's just, it's just a little website. It has a little uh, description on the left of how you might create these. And uh, that was Lewis Dot structure. Big topic in introductory chemistry is orbitals. And atomic orbitals in particular are challenging for students because of the mathematical shapes that are involved and the quantum numbers and getting a handle on what all this means. And some years ago, I got interested in thinking about orbitals in terms of probability. One of my um, other books that professor didn't mention there is an introduction to molecular thermodynamics, which comes at thermodynamics from a probabilistic point of view, from a statistical point of view, from a, from a natural point of view of, of uh, random sort of chance. And uh, that goes for orbitals as well. You probably know that these orbitals we look at are really uh, interpretable as probability distributions where we could find what's the probability of finding an electron in a particular place around the atom. And we built this website to emphasize that and try to show the relationship between these representations. Up in the left, you see the quantum numbers that we can have. And so n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, uh, L and M. Can't go higher than two, can we? And we can't go less than minus two. So it builds into the site the restrictions that we know and love for our various uh, orbitals. But the interesting thing is that it displays it in a way that you may not be particularly familiar with, which is as a probability distribution. So the web page itself just now ran through the statistics of the Schrodinger equation and produced a plot that is appropriate based on the probability of finding an electron. It's as though we did 10,000 checks of where the electron is, and this is where we found it. And then superimposed on that is the color that we know that we're familiar with of the phase of the wave equation. But this is just one of many, many different uh, representations that this website can deliver. We call it the pointillist. We can also show it a slightly different way, which instead of showing the phase of the wave function, it shows uses color to show higher density. And that gives a, a sort of a realistic aspect of where you're going to, just adds a little bit of an extra flavor to the idea of the probability. We can see the electrons are mostly in here and mostly in here, but every once in a while, electron might be found way, way out here, quite distant from the atom because it, the wave function actually is still present quite a ways away from the atom. It's just that usually what we do is we look at some region which specifies something like 90% of the orbital, uh, uh, the probability is within. So this is a site that you can use when you're talking about these to switch back and forth between these views and get, give students a better idea of what's going on here. You can also show radial plots. And uh, an interesting thing that you can do is add the results of the, what we call the Monte Carlo, which is the probability 
aspect. And you can see that there where we did the calculation using just probability, indeed, we actually matched the data. These little dots actually matched the curve pretty well in terms of where they are and where they're supposed to be. And they're, they're not exact because it's a probability distribution and there was some chance that a certain number of them would be inside or outside of that range. Okay, so that's number two. The third page I wanna show you is one of my absolute favorite pages. We built this page early on when I was learning to do things on the web many years ago, and it still is one of my absolute favorite pages. I call it Cool Molecules because one, one um, weekend when I was on sabbatical one year, I sat down and I went through uh, the big database of thousands and thousands of, of uh, crystal structures. <laughs> I, I went through 14,000 crystal structures and pulled out ones that I liked. So it's kind of Bob's picks of great structures. <laughs> and um, it is a site that you could do an awful lot with because you have about a thousand structures of all sorts of different things. And what you wanna do with them is whatever you wanna do with them. But we, we do have a little page here that suggests various activities if you're talking about hybridization or molecular vibration or periodic trends or VSEPR theory, we have some uh, built-in little discussions that you can have with your students, uh, suggested activities that students can do using the website themselves, exploring a little bit, or you could use in class yourself if you want to. I wanna also make a point that all of these Almost all of the uh, websites that I'm showing you, although I'm showing you them uh, at St. Olaf College, actually, you could put these on a flash drive and run them off your computer. They don't require servers. Uh, and if that's something that interests you, we can we can uh, maybe provide a, a web page at Fossey that shows how to get these websites installed on your laptop yourself and not have to depend on the internet at all. But right now we're using it from St. Olaf because that's easiest for me. So these are the sorts of activities and uh, there are many, many in these different areas similar to that. But let me show you the site. So the site itself is the database and it's set up as a periodic table. You can pick an element. So let's see, I like silicon. Well, what do we have here? We have uh, four, uh, about 15 structures with silicon. Most of them have silicon as the central atom. You see 15 silicon either as a central atom or connected to it. Of these 14 have silicon. Let's just show the ones with the silicon in the center. Well, not surprisingly, they're all tetrahedral because that's what silicon does, silane, Here's some other small molecules, pretty much small molecules. And then here's a giant molecule with gallium and all kinds of other things as well. Um, and the one place that you would particularly want to go to is the view, because that is going to now show us what when we were talking about JMOL, that's what we're talking about here. This is a little window that we can basically put anything in. And what we're putting in here, I'm going to make this a little bigger. What we're gonna put in here is uh, these various structures. So here's what the, kind of the cool thing about the cool molecules. See this little previous and next. I had a list of 14 and I can run through those. Now the interesting thing here is that this is a scale model. So the 100 picometers, one angstrom, this distance is not gonna change. And that means that as we scan through these, when you see different sizes, that, that, oh, what happened there? Look, the, the one with the green, that was smaller than the one with the red. Well, what's going on there? Oh, well, the green, if you look over here, that's chlorine. I think you can hover over it. There, that's a chlorine. 
And when we go to bromine, it gets bigger. So just that sort of comparison is something you simply do not see. Ooh, that was silicon fluoride, right? Going to silicon chloride, same structure, but chlorine is bigger than fluorine. And you can run through these pretty fast and make some very quick kinds of comparisons or explorations that students might be interested in. You can search it by all sorts of different things. So you can search it by shape. And that means that say I'm interested in talking about T-shaped molecules. Well, understand that these are all experimental data. This, there's nothing calculated here these are all from the literature. This is the actual known structure and there's, there are references to the actual literature if you ever wanted to go find where this data came from. And this was something that I've uh, championed for many, many years, the idea of bringing actual data into the classroom and not just relying on pictures of balls and sticks that have perfect angles, really getting the sense of the variation. You know, it kind of, oh, it's not really 180 there. It's a little, little less. 172 is the angle across here and 86 here because molecules are like that. And if you know a little bit of VSE.PR theory, you might even start saying, oh, I think there's a lone pair out here and it's maybe we're seeing adjustments to the angles because the unequal distribution of electrons around that bromine atom is forcing these two groups to be a little bit bent away from that lone pair. What else have we got here? So, um, well, <clears throat> let me get one that's a little bit more interesting than this. Um, <laughs> how about uh, trigonal pyramidal? There are probably lots of those, uh, 108 structures that are trigonal pyramidal. And I just wanna highlight this one little uh, column over here that says PDF, because you can have some fun with that. Uh, if I do this uh, bismuth tribromide and take a look here, and you scroll down, that is a piece of paper that if you printed it, you could use scissors and cut around the outside and fold on the inside. And the thing would fold up to an absolute scale model, 250 million to one with all the angles and the distances marked on that scale model. We have had a lot of fun with this. This is what we call molecular origami. And have, we've had just a tremendous amount of fun with that in my classroom um, when I was teaching general chemistry. So lots and lots and lots of examples there. Cool molecules, a terrific, a terrifically fun site. Next up, wouldn't it be nice to have a simulation of chemical kinetics that lets you really play with it, not just look at it, but actually work with it. And that was the thought I had when I wrote this site several years ago, when I was teaching what we have in the college curriculum, our second semester here at St. Olaf College, we do kinetics. And so I wrote this for the students in that class. And it has been, it has been very, very fun. Let me just give you a hint of how fun this is. So basically it's kind of a PowerPoint-like thing uh, that allows you to have discussions that relate to various aspects, almost like a PowerPoint presentation, but they are associated with actually interesting kinds of activities. So, um, if I go to the explorations, one of the explorations here, uh, what do you think of this? Okay, so if anybody's taught or, uh, kinetics, what we're talking about is the speed of reactions, right? And so what if we had a little website where we could watch a reaction go? 
And what we can do is we could start this reaction and watch it happen. Okay, we'll stop that one. Now let's start this one. And here's the question. Which one was faster? Here, let's just start them both and watch. Uh-huh, right? I bet you can see that the one on the right is going faster than the one on the left. But the question is, how much faster is it? And so then when I'm in class, I propose this as a question to my students. How would you figure out how much faster one reaction is than the other? And students come up with all kinds of different ideas and we try them out and see how they work. And sure enough, uh, there are various ways. Uh, one favorite is that students say, well, just do it for 30 seconds and see where it goes. There we go, okay? And then we'll start this one. And the question will be, how long does it take to get to the same? Ah, I think it's about the same. And then they say, oh, look, this is 32 seconds, 17 seconds. That sounds a lot like twice as fast. And so that starts getting us into the talking about how do you actually consider rates and uh, ideas of having graphs. So now we're going to start the same reaction and we're going to look at the table of data and we're going to see the graphs of the intermediates. Uh, we talk about slope, this, this initial idea of the initial rate. Now we're not going to even look at the flask, but we get the data. And now you can go over here. Look, we can look at the slopes of these to see what's happening. And you can get some all sorts of interesting information by exploring these slopes. And this website is set up with some uh, predefined questions that do have some answers to them that uh, you or your students could explore alone or as uh, in groups or in class. Um, I used uh, this extensively basically built my discussion of kinetics around this website when I was teaching uh, this course some years ago. That uh, overall is called kinetics, just so that it's something we can find, K-I-N-E-T-E-X. If you look up, if you Google kinetics, St. Olaf, you would, it would come up immediately. Hmm, pretty good. So uh, point groups, uh, next one. This is a web page I wrote a couple of weeks ago. I just thought I want to have a nice web page that is fun that relates to point groups. So here we go. Uh, one of the fun, actually, one of the first fun things is every time you load the web page, you get a different structure just for fun. There we go. There's another one. Now, here's what here's what's fun about this. First of all, we've got we we can pick a point group just to see what the heck, D5, seriously? Oh yeah, oh, ferrothene that's kind of twisted. There's no, there's no planes here because it's just a slight twist, but that destroys the planes. And so it's D5 instead of D5H or D5D. And um, so if you want to discuss a particular symmetry, you can do that and see, visualize the planes and the axes, the inversion centers that are in that particular uh, mo um, structure. But there's something even more interesting here than that. Other people have done that better than I can. Uh, the fun part here is we got a quiz. So watch this. We'll go into quiz mode here. And the question is, what's the, what's the point group? Okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, well, I think there's a plane right here. And it's gonna say, you're right. There was a plane, got anything else? Well, ah, now this is a tricky one. These are aromatic. Is there a plane, vertical plane here or not? The answer is yes, because those double bonds are actually there are resonance contributors that uh, even all those out. So even with those double bonds, we still consider that a plane. All right, and I think we keep going here a little bit. 
and we'd probably see some more planes. What do you think? Maybe there? Yep. Uh, we have any axes? I think we have an axis right down here. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Looks like it might be a C6 axis. And that's right. And as you do this a little bit more, you might decide that you've figured out what the point group is. And so you're gonna guess, or you're gonna say, and you say, now somebody out there probably knows what point group this is, but I'm gonna say, I got a horizontal plane. I've got some vertical planes. I've got a C6 axis. I think it's D6H. I got it, D6H. Well, actually, for me, that's pretty good because I usually make a mistake and I don't get these right. I'm not an inorganic chemist. But in this case, I got it. How, what do you think of that? So you can have a lot of fun with this website thinking about uh, and talking about point groups. And you can do all sorts of things like you can even save these models uh, and 3D print them if you want to. These are 3D print formats. And there's lots and lots of other things you can do. You can load structures from anywhere. So uh, there are these two sites that are, exist out there, PubChem and this group that's not known so well, NCI, National Cancer Institute, Computer Aided Design uh, uh, Group. And they have millions of structures. So if I clicked here and said, oh, give me the structure of um, 2,3-dibromobutane. There we go. We've got a structure. And now, you know, it does kind of look like there could be some symmetry there. I give up. Just, just tell me what it is. Oh, it's CI. There's an inversion center in there, and that's all we have. Must be right here. Okay. So that's the website. Fun. And while I'm at it, I really want to emphasize that really seriously, this took a weekend to write for me. And you can learn how to do this kind of thing yourself. It's we've created these little buttons, it's super easy. And if you have an idea, then you just have to run with it and get some help from others who have done these kinds of things before. And they're always there's a great group of people who are uh, willing to help you if you wanted to explore being creative yourself. Okay. Actually, the last one I want to talk about is uh, the Crystal Structure website. And this is a site that uh, I wrote several years ago for a meeting I was having at the American Chemical Society, I believe. And um, it's actually a very sophisticated site that allows great detail in terms of the all of the symmetry aspects of crystallography. So this this has very detailed uh, information, much more than you would ever use at an introductory level. But I want to show you uh, some aspects of it that could be quite useful at this level. So here it is. You can see this. I kind of rebuild my websites from each other. This is kind of the same idea, but it's got different buttons. So uh, this is a structure of quartz. Now, just to let you know, this is my favorite picture of quartz. You see this in books. It's beautiful. It's kind of like a figure eight or something like that. But you know what? It's an illusion because quartz is chiral. And what we really are seeing here, this is one of my favorite structures because you say, oh, there's that you can see the helical twist of this molecule. And that is what makes quartz a chiral crystal. It has a left-hand version and a right-hand version. In nature, when you get quartz crystals, some of them are left-handed, some of them are, I guess half of them are left-handed and half of them are right-handed. But there's many, many other structures here. There's some that I've loaded in already. So we talk about sodium chloride and its structure. We talk about how you can have uh, multiple unit cells stacked on top of each other. 
how they grow and grow to make the actual crystal structure, how you could have kind of a, you could think of, let's look at a space and fill it with these atoms and see what it looks like. Um, I went through the class 12 unit one on solid state and found these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven structures discussed there. Of course, we're gonna talk about diamond and it's probably more fun to use a three by three cube. So we really get that sense of the complexity of the richness of that structure. Uh, likewise, uh, graphite. Now in the unit cell graphite, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here, but when you get a, a three by one by one, you can kind of start getting a sense of it. And I think a three by three by one is what we'd really like to show students, don't you think? There we go. Now you can see how one layer stacks on top of another layer there. And that's kind of the picture we often see in books, but we don't often have the opportunity to play with it ourselves and move it around and really see what's going on. And that's what JMOL is all about, is playing with it. Um, here's a body-centered cubic. I'm not 100% sure of that. Uh, Face-centered cubic. And here's a hexagonal close packed. Oh, you know, <laughs> I think I have that backwards. Okay, I made a mistake here. I got to fix that. Uh, this one is the body centered cubic, obviously. And the, the, the uh, this one, this is a hexagonal close pack. So we'll work on that. Uh, I made a little, little mistake on that part of the site. But that's uh, that will be fixed. And that's how we do these. So that is my set of structures of, uh, of websites that I want to show you. I think we're, we have time for questions here. I actually ended up a little bit early. So, uh, um, yes, Professor Hansen. I think, I think I will leave it to you now to continue yeah, okay. the discussion. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Hansen. That was very informative and very interesting, actually. I hope uh, all our participants have enjoyed this uh, uh, talk of yours and uh, we are open to questions. So participants, you have any questions for Professor Hansen, please uh, put them up in the chat window. Uh, so 15 minutes so he can answer a lot of questions actually. So many teachers have a lot of good things to say. They say that it's uh, very informative and they liked uh, all the uh, websites a lot so that's all they say that the uh, they're thanking you for the nice session but if there are any questions on the topics or on the websites which professor hansen has discussed you can put it on the chat window so as you can I'm see i'm going to go ahead and unmute ramakrishna because he's got a hand here yeah okay we, yeah you we, can, we can do that too if you if you're not finding direct immediate questions let's let's go ahead go ahead yeah, actually oh, oh here we go hang on ramakrishna yeah, yeah. You, you got your unmuted sure go ahead yeah, you have a question. Uh, good evening sir it was very nice informative talk uh so you showed one slide where we can visualize the atomic orbitals like yeah. uh okay so i just want to know is there any way where we can uh, visualize the molecular orbitals once the bonding takes place obviously more complicated because there's so many more possibilities, right? A simple example like a CH4 or like C2H6, ethane or something yeah. you can just show. Yes. Okay. So if you have a, access to a program that can create the, a computational package, uh, one of the open source computational packages uh, that can create the models, can do the calculations, okay then we can load those models and have full access to all the molecular orbitals just from a drop down menu so you can go through the homo and the lumo and look at those and um i mean i have a few like benzene for example um i don't have a personally i don't have a collection of those but i think there are out there and i think we'll talk more about that next week because that's a little bit more in the organic chemistry side typically 
Yes, um, sir. So <laughs> thank you. If you come next week, we can we can, we'll definitely see a lot of molecular orbitals then. Uh, it's not something JMOL can produce itself. And I okay. don't know offhand of a particular website, but I think I think for sure they are out there. If you said, if you did a Google search and you said JMOL, J M O L, mm. JMOL. Okay, sir. Molecular orbitals or JMOL molecular orbitals ethene or something like that. I'll make you a bet you'll find a page that does exactly what you're talking about. You're okay, sir. Sure. I'll explore it. Thank you. Okay. Robbie? Any more questions? Uh, there is a question on the chat window which Vimal uh, Nayan has asked. Uh, it is about please guide best software to evaluate HOMO and LUMO. Well, I think Avogadro is probably one of the best software, open source software pieces that allow you to build a little molecule and then run the calculations. Um, Snellata, I think you've done some, there's some with, yeah, yes, Fasin yes. has done with Avogadro, right? Yeah, we have tutorials on Avogadro. So please visit the Spoken Tutorial website, which I'll give the link uh, in the chat window soon. Uh, Do you have a tutorial that, specifically talks about molecular orbitals? Um, no, we don't have a tutorial on molecular orbitals in our country. Yeah, <laughs> we should do. make one, yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think people would be very interested yeah, in yeah, that. Yeah. Because yeah. once you get started and see how easy it is, yeah, uh, it is you, can, you can go wild. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there is... Uh, Another question on uh, by Surya Prakash. Uh, he says, "Can we get the structure of coordination complexes?" Coordination Absolutely. Complex. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, in fact, the um, I said the ICDD. There's a there's a website. Well, Cambridge Crystallographic Data Site has many many structures and. Several of those, uh, they have a whole section on education, which is uh, about the crystal structures. The coordination compounds would be primarily crystal structure results. And you can certainly do that. And in fact, just so you know, all the websites I was showing you, if you had gone to one of these websites and gotten one of the structures, uh, it's, it's a format called CIF, C-I-F. You can just drag that into your browser at that window and drop, and that molecule will appear in that same context, like for the symmetry one or for uh, the crystal structure uh, website. Those those all accept drag drop uh, molecules, but but uh, you have to look around and and see. But uh, the crystal structures are out there. For sure, for lots and lots of coordination compounds. Yeah. And there are several in the cool molecule site that are coordination compounds. Thank you. Yeah, cool molecular site. I think I'll just uh, uh, put that uh, uh, link on the chat window again, actually, so that uh, everyone can click on that link and then. Uh, yeah, if it's the not there yeah. already, it'll. The, the slides that we just gave will be there, I'm sure, very soon. And Snellata will send a link, uh, a message to everybody who is here that points to the slides with the links. Does that sound about right, Snellata? Yes, yes, yes. We, are, we will put yeah. it, I actually upload it on the NME ICT website. And that's the same website where uh, the participants have registered. So if they go back to the website, they'll find uh, that these um, all these slides are uploaded and they're all clickable links on the slides. Clickable links, yep. Yeah, so you can click and um, uh, and they can- Try them out yourself. Yeah, yeah, try them, yeah. try themselves, yeah. Yeah, they can try a lot of, uh, they can explore basically all the website. And, and please, if you end up using these in class, tell us, you know, uh, I yeah. would love to hear that students actually enjoyed them or didn't or had trouble with them or didn't that would be great yeah we're starting to teachers, see some hands yeah uh, um, yeah there is a uh, another uh, question on the chat window which shivani saxena okay. is asking 
the students uh, get often confused when the it's a molecular orbital theory is introduced and the uh, lcao sounds very similar to the formation of sigma and pi bonds of uh, uh, the valence bond theory so is there any tool which can help them visualize compare and contrast these two what's it's the, the lcao uh that's the oh, least that's like some uh, natural yeah. combination or something yeah. is that the natural orbitals yeah sure. yeah it, um, it's the combination of atomic orbitals uh oh oh yeah like a linear so combination of atomic yeah orbitals combination of atomic orbitals well um i don't know of any particular site that's focused on that but there is a project if that's something that interests you talk it up and let's you know what would it be that would make that site perfect for you and um you know something that compares different ways of looking at structures could be very interesting yeah uh one of the one of the things that jamal can do that people don't generally recognize is that when you show a molecular orbital it's actually you know a combination of atomic orbitals that's what a molecular orbital is linear combination well Jamal can you can set it so it will show you the individual atomic orbitals that are going in to form the molecular orbitals. So that's another kind of interesting aspect to say, well, what part of this is from this atom, what part of this is from this atom, that kind of thing. You could do some interesting things with that, I think. Yeah, so please write to contact hyphen soul at fossi.in. Uh, the email I have uh, put it up in the chat window. So if you want to make your own uh, pages, if you want to learn how to make uh, your own, create your own content uh, in the web page, uh, we can help you do that. Yeah, if we get uh, enough people interested in in doing this, we'll hold some kind of a workshop or something. Yeah, like definitely. So if, we, if many so, of you are interested, so, we can organize a workshop. Exactly. Uh, uh, one day or a two day workshop, and then um, you can learn how to do it yourselves, like how Professor Hansen has shown. Uh, just right. now, uh, he created his own web pages, so you can do it yourself. Yeah, there's nothing magical about it. It's just a, a little bit of a learning curve for getting started with it. If you, if you are, or if you have students, if you have a few students who know a little bit about uh, JavaScript and HTML and are interested in creating a little cool web app or something like that, that that could be something that would interest them. Yeah, we can give a Let's template, see. a template page, and you can put your own things into that. Yeah. Uh, so, good evening from our end, sir. It was a very informative session, sir. Uh, so, basically, I'm a research student, and uh, I'm I'm actually having a trouble with making a chemistic structure of a if if a I have, I have a minus a synthesis of complexes. So, uh, how to exactly give a structural elucidation for a complex molecule, sir? So, you mean uh, draw a or create a three dimensional so basically structure? To draw, uh, yes, structure of a complex molecule. Is this an organic compound? Uh, it's, it's a combination. So, organic is my base molecule, which is a skip base, and a complexation with the metal, uh, uh, metal uh, acac it is. So it's it's kind of a complex compound uh, formation. So. Mm -hmm. Organometallic uh, compound. So organometallic compound. Yeah, organometallic. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a ligand and you have a metal, yes. basically. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. So the ligand itself is no problem at all. Uh, and and again, next week I'll be showing how to. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to draw structures in two D, yes, and have them come out in three D. That's one yes. of the cool things we can do. And I think that's what you're asking there. And then what you can do is you can manipulate that structure. You know, you can you can tweak it and you could in, you could put the metal in where you want it. So okay. there are ways of doing that. Um, and uh, basically, are, can, can, you come, can you come next? Can you, if you are you planning to come next Thursday? So you can see that. that. I have registered for that as well, sir. Uh, and okay. that's what is there any software available? Is basically I wanted. I'm so interested. Yeah, to it's know. web pages. You can do it all yes, on web pages sir. now. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. I think Jamal can do, uh, Professor Hansen. Yeah. Jamal can also do. You can build uh, actually a yeah. lot of complex molecules with Jamal, which is a free right. and open so, Good. So I'd be very interested in talking with you and seeing what you've got. Yeah, yeah, interested yeah. for sure. Yeah. 
even Avogadro can do that, uh, Jamal also can do, yeah. Right. Yes, good evening, okay. sir. It was a very uh, interesting and wonderful informative session to all the educators here, sir. And thank you thank for you. Uh, that to you as well as the team uh, IIT Mumbai. Now, my question is, uh, sir, can we uh, understand by using these tools, the quantum mechanics, like Schrodinger wave equation for solving these 3D shapes? Well, there you'd have to use software that's specially designed for that computational tools. What I what I describe are the results of calculation. So you use other soft you use software to make those measurements, and then uh, and do the calculations, and then we view them. Does that make sense? Yeah, actually, uh, Gajendra, what Professor Hansen is saying is that. Uh, Actually, there are other software, uh, the quantum uh, mechanics, uh, which calculates the quantum mechanics, and then they can be used. Actually, they were used to create these 3D models. Uh, so uh, that's what yes, I want to say. And, yeah. and, and primarily my focus has been web-based resources. And uh, the calculations you're talking about are more high power computer sort of calculations that aren't really amenable to web-based situation. Hope that answered your question. We're getting lots yeah. of more questions here. Who have I, yeah, who have I not offered to, uh, here we go. Shashank. Uh, hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, uh, hi, I'm Dr. S Dr. Anshisana. I'm, I'm doctorate student and uh, I would like to ask one thing. Is there any application to you know, uh, get the value of zeta potential. Uh, this is in solid state. No, this is in states of matter. Basically, we will talk about the particle size and like it's basically oh. uh, it is related to some sort of material sciences. Like if we will yeah. work on uh, nanoparticles, then only we can use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's I'm not familiar with that area, so I can't answer that question. It's kind of a little, little out. The, that's a little too far out in the material science for me. All right, no problem. Thank you, sir. Sure. Good luck. Okay, so yeah, there is another Hope question you for you, Professor Hansen. Uh, I don't know the name. It says admin, but uh, could you present us some visuals with respect to the concept of hybridization uh, relating with nature? We can uh, when we relate principles and concept with nature children would enjoy learning science. So mm -hmm. they become... Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, visuals. tell you what, I, I'm going to say that's, <laughs> that's a terrific idea for a web page. Get out there. Mm -hmm. uh, expand on that idea yourself. Think about what, how would you design, you know, what would you like to see what brings the nature in with the molecules? Um, I do have a site where I kind of did a little of that, but I didn't show it today. And if you send me an email, I'll send you a link to that. That's that uh, uh, molecule site, Nealanta, uh, that that does a touch of that. You know, it sort of gives a hint of the uh, little discussion of ice, for example, and uh, popcorn. And structure and stuff like okay, that. Okay, which is that link? I can post it in the way. Um, I'll I'll have to get it to you. We could we could get it to people, but okay. Yeah, or that who whoever that was who was asking that question, feel free to contact me. Uh, there is no name. It says admin. So I know, uh, but that's I'm a real person. Sure. So I'm, yeah. I'm talking to whoever is admin. Uh, uh, yeah. Feel free to contact us directly with that question, and I can yeah. fill you in. Sure. Uh, Viniti, did you have a question? Yes. Hello. Uh, it's been a very nice uh, uh, experience being with you uh, this evening. And uh, it has opened a world of uh, possibilities for me. I'm an associate professor here in uh, a postgraduate college where we deal with chemistry uh, in a single class of about 120 students. And they come from, uh, majority come from rural areas. So language is a very big issue with them. So here, uh, the visual uh, model 
itself is uh, so exemplary, so so nice that um, uh, what I would like to again know is that you showed one site where you uh, showed the uh, formation of a carbonate ion, if I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, the first, Lewis right? structure. Uh, yes, yes. And then you created uh, the dots uh, for the lone pair of electrons and the bonds. But he, uh, below that, there was a table uh, which signified some data. Uh, I just, if, if it's not a big problem, I'd just like you to just explain it again, because I was, I'm unable to correlate one data uh, to the, uh, that is the number of bonds uh, to the uh, carbonate ion. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I'm missing some point and I would like uh, if that could be clear. No problem. Yeah, um, I guess uh, we could, I, I, let, let me share my screen and I can just go back to that quickly and we uh, can look at it again. Would you like to do that? Uh, it was the first uh, link you had come to. Yeah. I think it was, yeah. uh, I, I'm not sure there's so many links we've been moving through. No, that's very easy. That was the first, uh -huh. the first link you had opened, uh, sir. And that was something you had talked about a carbon. Yes, yes, it was this. Construct a Lewis structure and we created a carbonate ion. Right. And you're talking yeah. about this little box yes, down this here. This box. And here we right. see single bonds are six. Six electrons. Um, Three bonds times two. Okay, so it's 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 accounting electrons. So single bonds have six electrons. Yes, yes. Meaning we have three single okay, bonds. Okay. That's was, what it is. Oh, thank you so much. Because here yeah, yeah, I yeah. was reading it as six bonds. Six there, of single course. bonds. Of course. Okay. Right. Thank you and so, so much. So the idea here is that we're trying to do an accounting, right? We know that we need 22 valence electrons. Right, right. Okay. And, and our right. charge is minus yes, two, two so we total of 24. Right. And so we've got six okay. already. Uh, yes, we still yes. need 18. And then as we start doing this, you see this, yes. okay, now we have a double trip. We have we a have single. A now we're going to start putting in, you can see these lone pairs get more and more and more. Yes. And I'm going to put another lone pair. Yes. Nope, nope, won't let me because now I'm taking them off. Okay, better see. And so yes. it just lets us Yes, adjust yes. these and it's now i know i have yes, two yes. more needed yes Bing. and then it shows me the yes absolutely the absolutely thank you so much here was this is something which yeah. i read incorrectly now, thank you so much now i don't know what the interest is here or the mm -hmm. need but you can take a little page like that like that yes. dot structure yeah that could be done in any language if if english is a barrier Yes. To students using that web page. I can show you. I mean, I can give oh, you that, that would web be great. page. That would we be could great. do that in different languages. You know, I couldn't do it, but you could see very easily how okay. to rewrite that and adapt it. Okay. I think it would be kind of fun. And then on my page, what I would do is put a link to another language version of it. Sure, sure, because that will make it very versatile. Um, uh, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Absolutely. And that's what people have to do. That's the distributed aspect of this whole operation. So that, do, does, the, uh, does the typical uh, technology we use in chemistry, that gets translated into uh, Hindi? For example, the majority uh, in my college are uh, Hindi-speaking uh, mm -hmm. population. So uh, there are very typical Hindi terms for hybridization or isomerism or conjugation. Uh -huh. A hyper conjugation or if I come uh -huh. to optical isomerism. So uh, will the language, uh, you know, change uh, or uh, will the language be translated exactly into? Uh, well, what, those... what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that if you know how to do the translation, you can do it yourself mm -hmm. and then just patch it into a, a similar website. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Uh, it's not like it would be automatic or anything. I'm saying that people like this in this group could mm -hmm. offer to do the translation for some of these websites if they feel that that's the barrier for their students. I have actually no idea because I I have a very limited knowledge of certain terms which I've been using since past many years to get through to them. But ah. beyond that, if, if, if I'm expected to... Uh -huh. Just translate the whole of the website into 
I, I don't think so. I'm no, thinking. no. For example, that what the one that you were looking at right there, that Lewis yes, yes. structure. Okay, it's just a little box of text. Yes, that right? I that, can. That's, that's that not I a can. big deal. No, that, that I can. Be possible. That I can. Yeah. But this is the smallest part what we teach because uh, we actually come to the bigger aspects in the undergraduate level, and uh, yes, definitely a box can okay. be translated. Thank you so much. Okay. Suggestion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, 91982 is an intriguing name. So I'm clicking on that to unmute 91982. Hello, 91982. <laughs> Hello, uh, good afternoon, sir. What's your real name? <laughs> yeah, you name oh, somebody. <laughs> Miss, Miss Manju Rajoria, sir. Okay. Miss Manju. Uh, sir, so, uh, I have a very simple question. Uh, when we teach uh, shapes of different orbitals uh, to the students of class 11th, the first question comes that uh, why DZ square is having a different shape uh, from all other four orbitals and how can you explain this shape? Very unique mm. shape of DZ square. Mm. So can you please throw some light on uh, the shape of DZ square orbitals? You mean like the S, uh, X squared, Y squared, and Z yeah, squared, D, all those uh, kinds of things? DZ, uh, the DZ squared. DZ. Asking about yeah. The yeah, 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 I think I can. Okay, so yes, when I teach this, I actually am not afraid of showing students the solution to the Schrodinger equation. And I have a, if you write to me, I'll send you it. Um, I have a one page PDF. Okay that is the written out solution to the hydrogen wave sure, equation. Sure. Okay. Yes, and it has, if you look carefully at it, you know, you look at it and go, oh my God, I couldn't possibly understand this. Look at all this math. But you look carefully and say, oh, there's cosines in there. There's sines. There's cosine squared. There's yeah. sine squared. And the students who have had enough mathematics can think, oh, you know, I could draw that. Oh, look, it looks just like this orbital because that's part of the solution. And you're putting the little N's and the L's and the M's in there. In that case, the mm -hmm. L's and the M's. And that changes the powers of those cosines and sines. And so that is what's driving the shape of the orbitals. Okay. And I especially like the fact that that, uh, that little, that equation has uh, factorials in it. And it has factorials mm -hmm. like N factorial or L factorial or L minus one factorial. And we know that factorials, the lowest number you can ever have is zero. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. You can't have minus one factorial. And mm -hmm. that's the limit for what L is given. A, like there's an N minus L factorial there. So what's the biggest L can be, huh? You know, it can't be bigger than N. Because uh, yes, yes. there would be no mathematical solution. That's my answer to that question. Give them the math and challenge them to make a tiny bit of sense out of it. And even if they don't understand how that solution was ever made. I love that, doing that with them. Oh, sir. I'll also try, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Send me an email and I'll send you that, uh, uh, that PDF. Okay, sure, sir. Sure, sure. 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 Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Please you. write to contact hyphen soul at Fossi. Uh, I have put the email in the chat window. So whoever wants to collaborate with us, please write to us. We'll definitely get back to you. And regarding the feedback form, uh, whoever have registered, uh, it has been sent to you or uh, you will receive today. Uh, whoever have not registered, I have to put the link in the chat window. I'll do that. Yeah, or please write to uh, contact hyphen uh, soul so you will receive the link from us. Uh, any more? Well, questions? I have to say, this has really been wonderful for me to see the excitement that's out there for this sort of thing. And I, I certainly hope that you walk away from this um, feeling that there's a very low barrier to using some of this in your classroom. And I hope you take the opportunity to. Experiment a little bit and see what you can do and uh, bring three-dimensional aspects into your classroom and make it dynamic. So thank you very much for all coming.
Thank, Thank you, you. Dr. Hansen. That was very interesting. Any more questions uh, from the participants? Because I think Professor Hansen has to uh, go for a class now. He has to teach his class in an hour, I think so. So uh, I think Usha, uh, our senior uh, manager at uh, FOSI, uh, will say a few words, a uh, word of thanks. thanks. So I'm very happy. Thank you, Srinathalata. So I'm very happy to uh, deliver the word of thanks for this occasion. I feel very privileged to do that. And um, so I would like to thank Professor Hansen for this wonderful session. And uh, I'm sure that uh, participants have gained a lot of knowledge on different uh, resources which are available out there. And uh, that can be used in their classrooms for their lectures and make the classes for the students more interactive and very interesting. So thank you very much for that, sir. And I think uh, our participants will definitely use these uh, resources in their uh, classrooms. And uh, I would like to thank all the participants uh, who uh, patiently uh, listened to the webinar and after that made a very lively question and answer session. So that also was a very good thing to see. And uh, uh, this is a FOSI project and we are actually promoting uh, the free and open source software and uh, one of it is JMOL. And uh, our uh, funding agency is the Ministry of Education. And I thank the ministry for uh, funding us so that we can do all these kind of uh, interactive sessions and uh, other things which can uh, help uh, reach out to people uh, with the open source software. So. I am very thankful to the ministry. And apart from that, I would like to thank Professor Kannan, who is actually the PI of this project as well as the driving force. He is the one who actually has a lot of idea and vision. And uh, he comes up with a lot of ideas to how to reach out to people. So this is uh, one of the way we do that. And uh, I am very thankful to him. And uh, finally, I would like to thank Snehalata and her team, who actually put... Uh, uh, together this uh, whole session and was uh, tirelessly working for the past few days and uh, making this a webinar a huge success. So I thank you all also and uh, thank you everyone and uh, a big thanks to you Professor Hansen and see you next week again. Absolutely. Thank you Usha, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, uh, so thank you Professor Hansen. I mean, actually, Professor Hansen put in a lot of efforts in the yeah, last definitely. few weeks for uh, this presentation. I mean, it has been received so nicely by all the teachers, students uh, who are there uh, in the webinar today. And I hope uh, they put it to use. They have to use it in their classrooms. Yeah. Now you have to use it. Very Good evening, to sir. Anything on my... Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for this session. You're welcome. Sir, I have one... Yes, a request do you have any lecture videos of uh, your classes in the youtube so that we can uh, oh. get learn from that because i i learned uh, this is the first year yeah. i'm teaching 11th standard so i have been watching a yeah. lot of youtube videos to actually visualize yeah. these abstract ideas i don't want to see only the textbooks i want to you know understand and explore and uh, see to the molecular level so Today you have just given us what are the sites and everything and I would be really happy if you have any lecture videos so that I can make you, I can learn a lot from it. Well, I appreciate that and the answer is I do, but they're private because they're in a private setting with students and so I'm not allowed to release them, but so, that's how it goes. Um, uh, I do have a set of organic mm -hmm. videos called Got It Videos. Uh, okay. that are different, but I, I, no, I don't. But thank you for asking and suggesting that. Yes, sir. So in future, uh, if you have any idea to do some videos also, it will be very helpful for the teachers like mm -hmm. us. It I understand. Be, yeah. It will be re really useful for us. Sir. Because what yeah. is important to the student in student's aspect, what are the things to stress about? On in what depth we have to teach them. Sometimes we should not teach them over also. They will get confused and they will also get uh, 
demotivated we they should not get threatened so we should tell only the right level of information to that age level so we if we have videos like that it will be really useful yeah i think you have to understand that the context is so different i teach in a private liberal arts college university in minnesota and our our class our students and our needs and our our setting is so different but there must be places in india that uh focus on exactly what you're talking about and specifically that class 11 and class 12 experience i would encourage you to um maybe talk with snelata and some others and find out what's out there uh for you because i understand completely especially if you're sort of getting started in this how much you want to see someone else do it and i i just have to have to say after 36 years of doing this that guess what pretty much you got to figure it out yourself and sort of sort of do it your do your own thing right so i yes sir, that's that how every class is certain like limited the... ass you know what somebody else does is just it's not you so yes. be brave and and uh try it you'll, it'll take you a while to try it out but i'm sure you'll succeed Yes sir thank you so much it's not i do have to learn right so i just wanted yeah. to ask you generally learn people have learned by trial and fire i think they say right <laughs> yes sir thank you so much so depending on okay thank you i need yeah. to go or i you will need to be go. late thank for class thank you so much sir thank you yeah thank you so much thank you it was all. great having you here yeah thank you see you again next week bye bye yes next week bye yeah bye 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 now uh, thank you all it was a very interesting session so i hope uh, you have all benefited from it so see you next week bye bye